It's Crusader Kings 2. I'm really enjoying this series just because it's it's something different, you know, it's something for us to do together. It's a community-based mod, and I thought I'd update you on some of the things that I've implemented since last time. So, when we left off, we had the Bushido system implemented in-game, which is what we should have now. There we go, on a level 2. Dummy and Nintendo Okazaku there with his uh, on a level 2, which seems a bit low for this guy, but he is uh, just an honourable and wrath, so that, that does add up there. He's also... One thing I have added here was uh, a suggestion. You know what? I'm going to find who suggested it because I feel like we deserve full credit for this. This was Haran Drocko on the first episode of, of the Rising Sun series. Suggested that as characters get older, they should be more respected because they're sort of like venerable elders. They're considered with more honor because they're wiser and, you know, have actually lived their way through life. So I've pretty much implemented what that comment suggested more or less exactly. So between the ages of 0 and 18, you have minus 2 because you are... You know, you're young, you're still wet behind the ears, you haven't done anything yet. So, why should people regard your word with such honour? So, you're you're very dishonourable, or not necessarily very dishonourable, but you have less honour because you're young. Whereas, when you're above the age of, between the ages of 50 and 70, you'll get extra honour. So, let me just double check exactly what that entails. So, between the ages of 50 and 70, you gain an additional honour. If you are over the age of 70, you get plus two honour, which is quite a big buff, because that would give you already this plus six, uh, same opinion within the religion. Just for being old... It's quite a good bonus, let's be honest. So, between the ages of... Uh, the original comment said, between the ages of 18 and 30, you get minus 1. I feel like 30 is kind of old, especially for, for this period of time. So, so, between the ages of 18 and 25, you get minus 1. Between the ages of 25 and 50, you have equal honour. Because that's, you know, your adult years. You have to make a name for yourself. And then above that age is when you get the honour added back up. Now, I'm not sure in the save game whether that's taken into account yet, just because... Um, a month hasn't ticked since we've last tested it. So this character, in fact, might gain an extra honor because he is over the age of 50 there. Another thing I've implemented is lots of various artifacts. Now, I haven't done the artwork for them yet because obviously that takes a lot of time that I could be spent doing other things. However, I think for the artwork, I'll do it myself. I'm, I'm pretty adept at Photoshop. I'm, pr I'm pretty good, actually, at Photoshop now. So I'll probably find some uh, good reference material online and create my own icons for those artifacts. But let's just say, for example, if we go ahead and add artifact uh, die katana. I'm hoping that works. Yeah, there we go. Gave it a beautiful new die katana. I haven't done the localization yet either. I've just got the artifacts in place with what they would give you in terms of bonuses. If I go ahead and open up the uh, the file here and just go through a couple more that I've designed here. So I haven't just gone completely with weapons and things like that. I've also added some sort of legendary rare artifacts akin to, say, uh, the crown of thorns or the nail of the true cross. You know, sort of those mythical artifacts that aren't necessarily going to exist. The, the uh, Ark of the Covenant is another really good example. So if we go ahead here and add... I've added the three Japanese Imperial Regalia, which are sort of semi-mythical items which supposedly exist, but no one's actually ever seen them, so they don't know for sure. If we go ahead and add artifact uh, sword underscore kusanagi, so this is supposedly a legendary sword that um, the Japanese Imperial family owns that were given to them by the gods. So that's obviously very, very powerful. Quality 5 there. Month Prestige 2, because it's a legendary Japanese artifact. Martial plus 6, personal combat plus 9. So it's essentially a tier above the highest crafted tier of... Um, smith items. Speaking of which, I've added all of the smith items as well. So if we go ahead and uh, add artifact. Oh god, I think this is a long one. Japanese armor tier for warden. And these are all going to have different names when we actually get into it. There we are. So there is the Japanese armor laid out there. All I've got to do is change the name and change the icon. And that's pretty much good to go. And again, it's all balanced around the base game ones. So this shouldn't be too immersion breaking. It shouldn't be too game breaking. I might even make them weaker. So... Because Japanese generally built their armor out of things like bamboo, lacquer, that type of thing. It's obviously not comparable to, to steel or plate mail or chain mail. So instead what we're going to do is I will probably give it less martial, less personal combat, more prestige and more sort of morale. Because, you know, the Japanese Kabuto, which is another thing I've added here, adds um, artifact. Might have just call it Kabuto? Yeah. So the Japanese Kabuto is obviously uh, just a lacquered bamboo helmet, but they were meant to be very intimidating, you know, big horns, big sort of spooky faces on the front there. So I'm tempted to give that more morale damage and more prestige in exchange for, you know, like I said, because they're not as powerful as plate mail or chain mail, that would reduce your martial ability. I think that makes sense to, to, to me, at least, anyway. And then we've also got something like another one of those, you know, random mythological artifacts I was talking about. If we have the Magatama, which are sort of like Japanese beads, this is the rare one, or at least part of the Japanese regalia, and that's three items in the Japanese regalia set. Uh, the Magatama, the Kusanagi Sword, and the Yata Mirror, which I've also added as well, obviously. I didn't want to have half a set there. I thought that would be a bit, a little bit strange. Um, add Artifact Yata Mirror, and again, I'm going to give these proper descriptions, proper 
you know, titles, things like that. For some reason, I made Kusanagi and the Yatamura quality 5, but only... The, I didn't... Oh, I didn't finish the Magatama. I haven't finished its quality yet. But again, I've tried to keep them balanced. So say, for example, the Yatamura mythologically is supposed to sh expose truths and reflect only the truth. So given that one, you know, plus 4 diplomacy, plus 4 intrigue, it's going to be a very, very rare artifact, which I'll say only, say, the Shogun or the Emperor has a chance of actually finding through, like, maybe the character event, maybe through some uh, Japanese culture event. Speaking of which... I have begun the groundwork on those, but I haven't finished them yet. Some of the artifacts, I've sort of got lots of skeleton in place, just because these things are very easy to fix. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an item change, it's a, it's a name change, and uh, a graphics change, and then they're basically finished, right? Um, I'm focusing on balance and gameplay to start off with. So, what I'm working on is we have um, sort of events based on visiting shrines, based on getting charms, based on, you know, visiting ancestral shrines, things like that, and, and sort of like um, area-specific deities. Uh, household deities is probably the right name for it. And the ability to worship your ancestors as well, that was suggested a lot, and that's something I've also started working on. So the ability to, you know, potentially worship ancestors. I don't know how I'm actually going to do that. Right now I'm just thinking, you know, you have a chance of getting, you know, additional martial or additional, I don't know, learning perhaps, depending on whether or not your character is, depending on your character's education. So if this guy worshipped his ancestors, he might get some, some bonuses to learning or piety, whereas, say, a martial-based character might get martial. Or a better system I'm going to try and implement is if any ancestors, you're actually worshipping the characters you've played as, if any ancestor has, like, um, I, I'll, I'll pick a random ancestor, I should say, and then you'll get something depending on what they've got. So it'll say, oh, you worshipped uh, Takahide Nintendo, who was, you know, a pretty crappy character all around. So you just got a little bit of intrigue or something like that. You know, maybe an event in that sort of style. And then obviously we'll have festivals as well, things like that. So, so rather than having a feast, we could have Japanese-specific festivals. Rather than just having, you know, what is essentially a very feudal feast, going out hunting deer. Because Japanese society, at least after the Meiji Restoration, which I suppose is a long time away, that wasn't really done. Um, but I'm going to assume based on nothing at all, that that also probably wasn't very, ref like, the, the feasts in game right now are not very reflective of Japanese cultural time. I need to do more research into that. But right now, I've been doing a lot of research into artifacts, that type of thing. What else have I implemented? I started work on um, the mercenary band. So a lot of you suggested Ronin, and then I was like, maybe a Ronin society, but actually a much better idea that one of you suggested. Again, I so many comments on that last one, I've kind of lost track a little bit, was to add Ronin as mercenary bands instead. So right now, if we go to our mercenary bands, we have access to, like, a lot of really strange ones, mostly Chinese bands, which isn't really right. We do want to get rid of all these and replace them with just, again, roaming bands of, of Ronin instead. I actually genuinely thought I saw a base game on them, but I think I'm wrong. Yeah. So instead of having all these Chinese bands, like I said, we'll instead of Jurchin bands as well, we'll replace them with, with bands of, of Ronin that maybe you could not hire via that system. I'm thinking maybe... So there's a game by Paradox called Sengoku, which is basically exactly what I'm trying to recreate in this one, but... A little bit different. So Sengoku is based on the Sengoku era. It's obviously a, a good few hundred years after this particular bookmark. But in that, you didn't just go to a menu and click the hire button. You actually had to show interest in hiring Ronin Bands. And show interest in hiring Mercenaries or Ninja, for example. So maybe that's something I'll do via the Intrigue menu rather than the Mercenary menu. But have some sort of backup Mercenary Bands here and there. As sort of leaderless samurai, so that you can hire those. But maybe get better ones via the Intrigue menu. I'm not sure. Again, just ideas that I'm messing around with here. The Shogunate... I've decided the way I'm going to implement it is you have to hold three of the five holy sites and also have the highest rank in the samurai society, right? I don't know how this dude's going to... Oh, he must have already been in here because this is Japanese exclusive society now from my little bit of editing that I've done to it. Um, so you have to have the highest rank in the samurai society to show that you're a competent military leader, but also hold three of the five Japanese holy sites to show that you've also got, you know, that religious aspect to it as well. So you've got the cultural aspect. You're not just, you know, becoming a military dictator. There's sort of the combination of culture and military there to sort of represent an early shogunate. Um, if it were to appear at this point in time, which obviously it didn't for a few hundred years again yet. So we're not, we're not talking about like a Tokugawa style government, but something a little bit different, maybe a little more primitive, a little earlier. That's the way I'm probably going to implement it. So if you guys have any suggestions or ideas based around that as well, let me know, of course. Clan rivalries, really good idea. Kind of a bit more difficult to implement because we're going to have to do some other things. Maybe based on the, uh, maybe based on events. Maybe, say, um, I take a look at the base game. Saying that, the base game rivalries are pretty crap. So in Merchant Republics, you generally have a rival family, which 
via an event will be picked randomly and then you'll become enemies with them. I really don't like that. I do like the Game of Thrones style system, as one of you pointed out. They, they did it very, very well. So I'm going to be basing it on that system. And I'm not sure how we're going to do that. Maybe pick another, another equivalent level character. So another Duke within, say, I don't know, a, a, what, what's the difference between us and, say, Mutsu here? 131. So within 150, let's say, or something like that. Or within 100. Another Duke tier character that you can have an, a, a, a blood feud with, basically. And they'll hate each other and get minus 100 between everyone in your family and everyone in their family. I feel like that could work. I feel like that might not be a bad idea because then they're always plotting to kill you. Maybe even set them as your rival as well. So maybe they have the head of the clans being rivals. And that's an inherited thing if I can work out how to do something like that. That might work. I think that would be the best way to implement something like that rather than having it. Like the base games is like I said where someone's just picked at random. And then you go through this event chain and suddenly become rivals. Because that seems a little bit crappy to me. It's a little bit of a cheap way of implementing it. Should we carry on with the game? And hopefully see maybe some of these things crop up. Some of the artifacts. We'll, we'll go ahead and get rid of the ones that I've... Uh, I've spawned in here just for gameplay purposes. This is going to be sort of half mod making, half gameplay. And of course, if you've got any suggestions that you'd like to see changed or added from what I've already suggested or, or anything completely new, let me know. Any corrections as well, I greatly appreciate it because I'm spending a lot more time doing research than I am actually modding it right now, which is fine. You know, obviously that'll be something I do at the start here, but you know, if you guys can help out where you can, that would be incredible. And of course, full credit where it's due. I will remember to write down your names from now on to, uh, and I'll go back and, you know, give proper credit for the relative you know, Bushido system changes that we've made. Is this guy going to get any more honor? Or maybe that's already calculated. Oh, it's when the game loads. Right. Because I was that clever. <laughs> Let's not go that far. I, I was that, you know, forethinking to... So that it's calculated once when we load the game there. So, uh... That should be alright. So, Just and Charitable definitely play into the honor system. So does his age, though. So is that working correctly? Well, I mean, he's got Wrath. So in theory, it should be a minus one as well. So that's one, two, three... Plus minus the one to take us down to on it. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. To take us down to level two there. Understandable. Trusting isn't part of it. That's my mistake. It's just charitable and just there that are, are part of it. Obviously, just trusting would make much sense in terms of honor. Does, does trusting someone make you honorable? I'm not really sure. Uh, we've got a man trying to assert my title. And again, I think replacing a lot of these event pictures as well. Because right now, they just default to the Arabian pictures, which don't really make much sense. The Middle Eastern sort of uh, picture set. I'll see what Monumenta uh, Nipponic Historic, or however that mod is pronounced, has done it. And I might even find some of maybe try and find some royalty-free, um, sort of Japanese equivalent replacements of that. Maybe some old Japanese paintings that have gone into the public uh, domain. Things like that, just to make it feel a little bit more right. Because right now it feels, like, it feels a little bit strange seeing all these strange Arabic portraits popping up. Anyway, not saying they're strange because they're Arabic, they're just out of place. Don't, don't take me out of context. Don't quote me on that one. The book composed. Everyone knows I spent several years directing the work of my book. And today we have made honest recipes. I felt inspired. That generally means that we got the best quality one. National text model. No, that's really not bad. What? That, that's just god awful. So we might also need to change some of the flavor text, particularly on the books. Although they've done a pretty good job of this. Sometimes the daimyo has to use whatever resource he has. It cannot always be pickled boar heads. Again, maybe, maybe localizing some of the books here so it makes more sense in a Japanese respect. But that's pretty good, honestly. Honest Recipes is, they've done a good job with that, with that title. Daimyo Nintendo Okazaku never stood a chance, did he really? We are now playing as Daimyo Donkey Kong, nearly four years old, oh shit. And we are dishonorable there because we are a young child, and a young child ruler that I imagine people don't like being ruled by. So we know that system works at least. Now the Emperor wants to marry my mother to, to his son. So our half-brother could potentially be the Emperor of Japan. I accept. That seems like a really good idea. Now, is that... Oh, that's the deposed emperor. Like, the, the, the figurehead empire down here on the uh, on the islands, on the Ryukyu Islands. Right, okay. Maybe that was not the best idea then, in hindsight. Oh, the council positions will... Oh, that's another thing to do. Rename these council positions. So, this was another thing that was brought up, and I'm completely sorry. I forgot to write this one down. So, let me uh, just get this on my list quickly. That's partially why I'm still playing the game, is so that we can get ourselves more ideas in the future for, for what to rename. So obviously we need uh, localize um, names. So rather than Chancellor, we'll have whatever the Japanese equivalent is. Rather than Spy Master, say like Ninja was suggested. But I don't know if that makes too much sense. Obviously this guy's just a, a random it, it, misguided warrior apparently. Um, you know, try and find Japanese equivalent of these names rather than what they are now. Because this one doesn't make any sense. Up Upad Hyaya? I don't think that's Japanese at all. So... We'll have to get something better for that, I think. Anyway, how are we doing in terms of religion right now? Um, see, we've got some different religion up the north there, so we should probably just start proselytizing that. 
Maybe we can rename the actions as well to something a bit more Japan-centric. And again, the minor tiles are another thing I'll have to work on as well. My god, there's so much to be localized. Let me write that one down. Localize minor titles. The big one right now for me is definitely finishing off the Samurai Society, replacing a lot of the art there. Um, obviously changing the ranks. Have I already done that? Yeah, maybe giving it different, um, different sort of powers as well. And sort of using this as a skeleton. Now, obviously, if we were going to release this mod, I would have to cut all this out because this is part of the Orders of Chivalry mod. But I have made my own societies before. It's just very time-consuming. So this is more of a proof of concept than obviously anything that would go into the final release mod there. I'll have to go ahead and make my own from scratch. Because I don't think that would be very fair releasing someone else's mod with a different coat of paint on it, you know? Um, despite how much work I put into it, I would like to, you know, just for my own benefit, make it from fresh there. Motsu Kamiya Capital. How close were we to a kingdom level title? We can't be too far off, right? Um, oh, I remember we needed this final duchy in the very, very north, didn't we? Right. And again, we're not... Is that called a kingdom or is that actually called something different? Because obviously a daimyo has replaced duke. And what, what were counts called instead? Kami? So I imagine the kingdom level title has something different again. We can actually check because we have a king, don't we? Uh, the Jo? Jo Yamato Natsu of the, the Yamato Kingdom. Right, okay, fair enough. So they've actually thought about that. And the emperor is called what exactly? Uh, Mikado. Right. Again, if that's not accurate, feel free to correct me here because like, how do I know this, you know? This is completely not something I know anything about. Um, I know very little bit about Japanese culture. Just because, you know, I was part of the generation raised on Japanese crap. So that's generally how it works. Um, but yeah, uh, Japanese feudal names. Not my strong point, I will admit. And again, I'm doing a shit ton of research. And it's taking a lot of time away from the actual modding aspect of things. Is this playthrough doomed? Maybe. But again, it's just a playthrough to see what things we have to rename. What about the sort of wife-concubine system? I need to look up whether or not it was appropriate for... Japanese rulers did have concubines, didn't they? But did they also have second wives? You know, was it was it was that poly? Uh, I'm trying to think. Polyamory isn't really the right word for it. Um, multiple marriages. Help me. Poly polygamy. There we go. Polygamy. Uh, recently, one of your planets has been taken by a terrible disease. Why must it be so cruel? Was it a polygamous system? Because obviously, secondary wives already exist in the game, so that would be a, a system that could be quite well implemented in this thing. You don't really see it too often in the base game unless you're playing uh, playing you know, a Muslim religion. Some of the laws will need fixing as well. I think that's another major thing that's a, a, sort of a pretty easy fix. So it's just a case of renaming them, adding them in the localization file. So rather than having Roman law, because it's as if, you know, 1075 Japan, they really cared about Roman law at all. We could have these renamed or even change the law system entirely. So it makes a bit more sense. Again, did they have vice royalties in Japan? I mean, I doubt it. Because that was a very sort of feudal Western thing to do to have vice royalties. So... This will need a lot of altering. So we need a lot of change, especially that banking laws as well. Did Japan really care about that? Um, obligations. We could adjust that system, but I feel like that's a sort of hard-coded base game system that might not need touching. Again, council power as well. I'm going to need to look into see what sort of uh, what sort of effect that had on the government. And I want to try and make a good government type, because obviously we're not going to play feudal. Feudal doesn't really make much sense, even if we call it like Japanese feudal rather than regular feudal. And adjusted it based on that as well. So we'll leave it there for now, because I'm just sort of spitballing ideas. Letting you guys know that there has been an update. Because I didn't want to, you know, wait too long between episodes for you guys to think it was dying. I've added a little bit more. I'm still working on it. Again, if you've got any suggestions, any alterations to the things I've already done, let me know. Because I'm very, very interested. This is going to be quite cool, I think, when it's finished to have this sort of community-based mod project.